The 2020 season for the Tennessee Titans was an interesting one to say the least. Despite winning the AFC South, they were just one and done come playoff time. Derrick Henry once again led the NFL in rushing yards while Ryan Tannehill proved that his 2019 campaign was far from a fluke. Receiver AJ Brown followed up his rookie season with an even better one statistically. The issue for Tennessee last season was just their damn defense. They finished 11 and 5, 5 and 3 at home and 6 and 2 on the road. Within the division, they went 5 and 1. Offensively, they were tied for second with 396.4 yards per game, and defensively, they ranked 28, giving up 398.3. That right there tells you literally everything you need to know. It's no secret the Titans boasted a hyper-efficient offense in both of the last two seasons, powered by Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, and A.J. Brown. However, with little to no defensive help, this offseason brought plenty of turnover from a personnel and coaching perspective creating challenges and opportunities for the 2021 Titans. When the draft rolled around, they selected Caleb Farley, a cornerback out of Virginia Tech with a first round pick. In round two, they drafted offensive tackle Dylan Radens from North Dakota State. In round three, they stuck with defense, drafting linebacker Monty Rice out of Georgia. And later on in that third round, they drafted another defender, cornerback Elijah Molden out of Washington. Now the Titans saw quite a few starters from last year's team either leave for free agency, Corey Davis and Jonu Smith, or be released to free up cap space, Malcolm Butler and Adoree Jackson. With that so cap space that they did free up, they signed Bud Dupree from the Steelers, Josh Reynolds, a wide receiver, from the Rams and former New Orleans Saints cornerback Janoris Jenkins. But of course, the biggest roster move came when general manager John Robinson pulled the trigger on a trade with the Atlanta Falcons for seven-time Pro Bowl receiver Julio Jones in exchange for a 2022 second-round draft pick and a 2023 fourth-round selection. Their strength of schedule ranks tied for 13th. Some notable games are Week 2 at Seattle, Week 6 versus Buffalo, Week 7 versus Kansas City, and Week 9 versus the Saints. 6 through about 10 there is brutal. They have a stretch of Buffalo, Kansas City, Indianapolis, the Rams, and then the Saints. So if they can get through that, they'll be chilling. As for key players, when you talk about star power, think Derrick Henry, who became just the 8th 2,000-yard rusher in NFL history while leading the league in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns for a second straight season. At 27, Henry is coming off back-to-back 380-plus -back carry seasons, including the playoffs, and will look to build on a Hall of Fame career. Speaking of the Hall of Fame, Julio Jones was limited to just nine games last season because of injuries, but before that has posted six seasons of 1,300 or more receiving yards. If he is healthy, that is the question. Jones will pair with A.J. Brown to give Tennessee one of the top wideout duos in the NFL. Brown enters just his third year, and with 30 games under his belt, he has put up some extraordinary stats. 125 total touches for 2,186 yards from scrimmage and 20 total touchdowns. And fine, I'll be the first one to admit it. I was wrong about Ryan Tannehill. I didn't agree with the huge contract extension and quite honestly thought the 2019 season was a fluke. But Tannehill's passing rating the past two years were a league leading 117.5 and last season 106.5. And it's time to accept that this is just an unusual story of a quarterback finding an entirely different level after 30 years old. Even if you're not totally sold on Tannehill, at the very least, you have to admit he's good enough for the Titans to win with. As for the defense, the Titans had 19 sacks last season. Only the Bengals and Jaguars had fewer, and neither of those teams were close to the playoffs. Of the 13 teams that had the fewest sacks last season, only the Titans made the playoffs. That is why Tennessee was forced to overpay for Bud Dupree. Dupree hit double-digit sacks just once in his six seasons with the Steelers. 
though he was on his way last year before he did tear his ACL, which just makes him an even riskier signing. But the Titans were forced to gamble. Good pass rushers are hard to find, and it's very difficult to win without a pass rush in the NFL. The secondary is led by ball hawk safety Kevin Byard. The former first team all pro was stretched thin last year, but should be able to play more center field come this season. And finally, for my projections, all told the AFC South figures to be a two team race between the Colts and Titans. And I think the defending AFC South champs are in a perfect position to repeat. Last season, they scored just under 31 points per game. And the addition of Julio Jones will lead to them scoring even more points. On paper, the defense is better and hopefully it translates on the field. Their division mates, the Colts and Texans, have turmoil at the quarterback position. The Jaguars are in a rebuild with a rookie quarterback and a first-time NFL head coach. Unless the Titans implode offensively, they are going to run away with this division. I'm going 13-4 and, and a team you do not want to see come playoff time.